Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this stream, which is very, very special. 40th birthday of Shashi Kiran, who's one of the greatest players to have played the game of chess in India. Uh, and what a gem he is. And I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to have him here today and interview him, ask him about his games. And I have also prepared some questions about his life so that you can get him get to know him better first of all this is our thumbnail for today uh, with <laughs> sashikiran's knockouts because you know the way he plays chess is simply phenomenal uh, he is an amazing player and some of his games show some moves which are unbelievable as you will see today just a second uh... Ah, Sashi. Hello? Uh, I don't think it will. Just if you go in. Ah, okay. Then... Hello, hello. Yeah, sorry guys. So, uh, Shashi Kiran will be here in a second uh, and it will be so cool to talk to him. But before he arrives, I want to tell you guys a bit about him. In fact, let, let him join in. But if you have any questions, please, please do ask uh, and it would be very nice to answer them. So, do not hesitate in asking your questions because this is your chance to speak to the legend himself so some of his achievements are he is the second uh, player from india to cross 2700 after vishi anand so anand was the first one second was shashi third was hari krishna fourth was vidit gujarati and fifth is adiban so they, these are only the five players who have managed to cross 2700 and shashi kiran is the second one and uh, while we are speaking we have the man over here so i'm just going to admit him uh, and welcome him on stream hello hello shashi can you hear me yeah i can hear clearly yeah one second let me just get you on the screen can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I think there's a small lag uh, from your end. My uh, lag from my end. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's a wire connection, actually. Okay, okay. One second. First of all, uh, Shashi, welcome. A warm welcome to you. Thank and, you. And uh, wishing you a very happy 40th birthday. Thank you. Uh, what, have, what have you done today on your birthday? Anything special? Uh, just uh, some normal stuff maybe uh, work a little bit harder this year yeah oh, this year yeah more hard i i can't believe you working harder what would that mean you already work so hard <laughs> yeah but uh, sometimes you know uh, you have this uh, period where you can't play yeah mm. And uh, that is uh, that is the, uh, the, that is the exact time you know you should be working harder you know to put uh, things in perspective and uh, I mean uh, for instance I, I guess we probably won't be playing OTP tournaments for the next uh, six months yeah at least until June maybe mm. yeah and uh, during this period you know you have uh, the law you have the some time in your hands so you put your uh, uh, games in perspective and see where you can improve and uh, so on and maybe uh, I mean have the proper opening report here organized and so on yeah a lot of uh, other things to do anyway yeah yeah that would be so nice in fact Sashi in the comment section in the chat everyone's saying you look like 20 years old not 40 
yeah yeah we're going to we're going to talk about what is the secret of sashi kiran's fitness and all of that but you know sashi uh, first of all a sh- small intro that i had written i want people to know uh, i told them that you were the second uh, grandmaster from india to cross second player ever to cross 2700 he is four time national champion he is the former asian junior champion in 99 uh, here he won this and he has won so many huge events uh, some of them are hastings open politican cup sigaman aeroflot asian championship he also won the asian games in 2006 uh, a gold medal over there uh, he received the arjuna award uh, in 2007 he crossed 2700 then he won a very very big event with a close to 2800 rating in pamplona asian blitz champion corsican op circuit champion and uh, he is an im in correspondence chess and last but not the least member of the indian team to have won the bronze medal at the olympiad in 2014 uh, shashi this this is a huge huge list in fact i must have missed many out of these but these were some of the most prominent uh, ones well so sashi i i want to talk about chess as well as about your life a bit i have prepared a few things but first i want to talk about one game which i'll tell you how it came into my life uh, so i'll just uh, switch to the chess board uh, get you here uh, and this one is like one of my most favorite games so there was this time when i was solving this book called um uh, improve your chess no how is it perfect your chess perfect your chess by uh, volokitin uh, yeah volokitin train yes yeah. volokitin and grabinski and um, mm. there was this position which came and i was like unbelievable who is this who played this entire thing and it turns out uh, when i checked the answers there it was your game and i was so so fascinated so this is a question which has been going on in my head since now almost uh, 10 12 years uh, this is the position that you had on the board tell us a bit about this game because would you would you say this is one of your best games yeah i think so yeah for sure yeah because uh, uh, one thing okay uh, opening was a little bit uh, unorthodox not not uh, uh, um, i mean not not very usual stuff uh, i i knew this uh, krasnakov was doing this stuff and uh, although i tried to get something i really couldn't get uh, much out of the opening yeah and uh, at this point yeah it was uh, clear that once bishop g6 was coming yeah so i had to do something immediately i mean he would probably even take over after bishop g6 so if i move the king or something let's say go bishop g6 and then probably just go something like e4 or something and so some, somehow uh, he starts to take over a little bit yeah i mean not not my piece are not uh, mobilized uh, so well maybe still f4 maybe but uh, i'm saying in, in the sense like um, it's uh, something uh, some kind of position i thought uh, uh, i had to do something immediately and uh, when i saw that the queen side was uh, all right uh, i said okay i mean i think i should take this uh, stuff yeah also it, it, uh, one of the main reasons was um, i had a big uh, string of uh, draws before this game yeah i was playing black i was on um, board to I, i think i played like seven or uh, six or seven blacks in the whole tournament yeah a lot of blacks and uh, a lot of draws i was i cannot cannot say that uh, i had a bad tournament i think i made plus 2 or something the whole but uh, too many draws and um, i really was uh, you know trying to get some game going yeah and uh, this was also one of the reasons that okay let me go for it yeah yeah and and when he played bishop g6 uh, sorry you took d takes e5 uh, did you see like krasenko was surprised 
because i think he is one of those players who doesn't really sit on the board yeah he is walking around a lot yeah uh, yeah but uh, uh, okay it's it's been a while and uh, uh, i guess he was a bit surprised yeah and uh, first of all uh, after, after the game he could not believe that the coin sacrifice would work yeah <laughs> yeah i mean bishop g6 <laughs> was played and yeah but uh, the thing was like uh, after which i checked to the computer i, I think the, the coin sack was quite all right and uh, i was uh, never outright losing at any point of this game yeah so so it seems all right to me so yeah. you took he took here with a check and you played king yeah. a1 uh, you of course you hadn't uh, thought about f takes e4 because it loses a tempo he will just I think it's losing. Yeah, piece, it's losing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just well. lost. So you have to go king a one. Now the queen is yeah. attacked. So he played queen e eight, and now you took. Yeah. And uh, here a four, you you would have considered here queen takes e four, but then there is this knight g three, knight h five. Probably knight g three and uh, knight h five. Yeah. So a four, you went back. Now rook to yeah. f three. uh white wants black wants to sacrifice on c3 and hoping for some blockade because the two bishops are very strong and you you actually allowed it uh you said okay no issues e5 he played knight to d5 here i i guess he he could have tried this uh yeah i guess so yeah but i think it's just a good composition i probably take and then maybe some rook h1 yeah, yeah. even rook h1 Queen g3 and rook e7. Ah, uh, your your pieces are just so beautifully coordinated, all of them. With this pawn, so knight to d5 he played. You went bishop takes, c takes d5, rook takes d5. I think by now you would be enjoying yourself, no? In this game, like <laughs> such a nice uh, position. No, uh, uh, okay. I think uh, 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 this was one of the key moments. Yeah. If I had not found uh, Rook T D one, yeah, then it could have been not that uh, easy, yeah. Yes. Because uh, I had to avoid the exchange of uh, rooks, yeah. Yeah, Rook D D one. Uh, so, so basically, you're saying if you had played Rook H D one, then he would have. No, gone. then uh, Rook F one, yeah. So here it's not easy already, yeah. So Rook D D one, Queens. Yeah, only after Rook D D one actually White is winning, yeah. Yeah, queen c4, and now uh, e6, and this is look at these guys, these pawns, unbelievably strong. Um, queen takes e2, he took d7, threatening to queen. He went rook to d3, and rook d e1. <laughs> Next to e7, e8. What a game! What a game! Did 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 uh, people come and congratulate you after this game? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, and okay, I mean, I, I uh, uh, of course uh, it's uh, it's a nice game, but uh, I was especially proud because uh, Anand uh, congratulated me. It's fantastic game, yeah, and uh, I was very happy. Anand yeah. was there in this event, right? He was playing on yeah, board yeah, one. Yeah, Anand, Anand. Uh, he was playing on board one, yes. Yeah. Uh, and Vishy uh, mentioned that uh, this he 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 enjoyed this game, yeah, Anand. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. This is this is the kind of game which kind of immortalizes you in chess because then for for years people will see these this game and they will learn from it. Uh, if if you had to say another game of yours which comes close to this. uh this feeling like crushing i'll let you think meanwhile i mean i have my selection but <laughs> no i i i do have a, a big um, i mean uh, at some point uh, uh, i thought okay i just uh, collect my best game uh, this thing i had like uh, about uh, 70 games oh yeah oh my god i mean it is a uh, uh, my uh, selection and uh, a lot of games uh, come into my mind yeah and not just uh, uh but something that you know uh, of course my game against artemia will yes, definitely yes, i have collected yeah. it okay and uh, uh perhaps uh, i think uh, uh my game against robson this was in the world team championship in 2000 yeah. 
in 2017 oh, okay. yeah very interesting i i don't this know this is uh, uh, this uh, would be uh, uh, it's a nice game because uh, first of all also it's a uh, it's a good uh, decent roping preparation and uh, com- combined with uh, good play over the board as well yeah so that makes it uh, one of the memorable games for sure okay. and uh, also it's a little bit of a uh, 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 proud moment because uh, i kind of uh, improved on uh, nakamura giri yeah on the previous year yeah so, ah so so also an improvement over the do- over a top game yeah so it's kind of uh, so you were playing with uh, white here uh, yeah i was playing with white and yeah. it was this very topical line in the meran was quite topical line a5 yeah. e4 e5 rook d1 queen c7 yeah and yeah. here uh, g3 was played by nakamura against giri yeah yeah and you prepared d takes e5 knight takes e5 well actually i've been waiting for a long time in fact uh, the, the whole line was prepared in 2013 yeah okay uh, so yeah, maybe one like, of uh, these uh, times where you were working with vishi uh, for the world championship yes yeah so uh, this one uh, and uh, uh, okay i mean this uh, idea of course uh, at that time i checked uh, it was uh, quite all right and uh, everywhere white is getting a quite nice position mm. yeah and uh, and i think uh, 90 g4 is already not not the correct direction yeah i mean it's a common move in this positions but uh, bishop c5 is probably a bit better yeah instead of this uh, yes bishop c5 yeah uh, it was uh, okay yeah. also it was already played in correspondence 2013 yeah so now uh, it uh, so this 90 g4 after 90 g4 already white is having a little bit better of it everywhere yeah more or less yeah it a, at that point you had said this is the first line of the engine so it's not so uh, it can't yeah. be so bad so bishop h2 king f1 yeah. was your prep knight yeah. takes g4 yeah. and uh, Uh, g3 all the all the g3 uh, and until g3 it was all uh, prep yeah and um, of course even after f5 also i did consider at uh, at home in fact that is uh, i mean i more or less uh, had like uh, until move uh, 20 25 yeah the only problem was to remember it over the board yeah it was taking some time yeah yeah, yeah. i mean uh, uh in fact the thing was uh, after uh, until move knight uh, f5 i had uh, barely sp- i had spent already like uh, 30 minutes hmm. because uh, the thing was after knight f5 uh, i uh, think during night uh, during the game there was uh, the engine was actually actually showing uh, quite a big advantage after knight f5 hmm. yeah so in in a sense like uh, i kind of left this line and moved on to other lines so yeah during prep yeah so this is one of the things which so, happens when uh, top players prepare is they they sometimes base their analysis on the engines uh, and then when the engine says some move is really bad then they will say that we'll figure it out on the board because it's like plus yeah, 3 or that, plus 2 if it gives then you you generally yeah. look at but then when you actually sit on the board sometimes it's not so simple that is true but uh, yeah here like actually the engine is actually showing 1 point something here yeah, 1.54 yeah it is big uh, advantage for the uh, white yeah and uh, i kind of uh, really moved on at this point yeah i mean uh, do not really consider what uh, he played yeah queen x5 yeah because uh, i had only considered g6 yeah hmm. G6 was your... I mean G6 and uh, the G6 actually the line is quite all right after F3 bishop takes G3 bishop G3 93 queen F3 king G1 and uh, something like uh, queen G3 and knight G2 yeah wow wow yeah i i thought i could uh, defend the attack and uh, somehow try to you know convert with rook D3 and so on yeah so he played queen h5 and then yeah queen h5 somehow queen h5 uh, okay i mean rook d7 is the uh, kind of obvious move i hitting g7 hitting b7 and when you play queen h3 check i can simply run away king e2 king d2 it's a very obvious move but uh, still i think uh, i spent like 15 minutes on rook d7 yeah mm. 
I really want to make sure you know, like uh, this, uh, I did not uh, let this game go. Yeah, it was uh, very important. Does yeah. it happen that when you uh, play a new idea in the opening, you feel an extra kind of a responsibility to make sure that the game reaches? <laughs> uh, not really, but uh, I mean, uh, in in general, if you are playing uh, a new idea, then uh, you are generally playing quite quickly. Yeah. So I was uh, playing quite quickly until uh, let's say move um, uh, twenty, move nineteen, yeah. I think. Yeah, and move nineteen. I had uh, barely spent uh, half an hour, but uh, that too not because of uh, uh, this thing. And, uh, I had to uh, get the details. Yeah, so it, like uh, maybe I spent like uh, five minutes here and there just to you know to remember all the details during the game. Right. Yeah, right. So not much time was actually spent on uh, this thing. You know, probably if something goes here, something goes there. You know, try to remember all the details and so on during the game. And uh, by the time actually when he played two in H five, I think he was already approaching. My opponent was already approaching bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he took on F five although uh, here, and yeah. then you just so took back. Here. He gave a check, and you came king E one. Yeah, I actually, as per my notes, uh, I have uh, until move uh, uh, eighteen. I have barely spent uh, eight minutes here, so that was all prep until move eighteen. But after F five, I think I I spent some time. Yeah, like uh, I spent uh, almost uh, let's say let's say twenty minutes here before playing bishop. Actually, it's the only move. For some reason, uh, I spent like twenty minutes here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before playing Bishop of Four, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just to you know to remember all the details, yeah. So check. You went King D two, Bishop C eight. Yeah. He gave you gave a yeah. check. Yeah. No, the thing is, for instance, uh, uh, I had uh, uh, this. Uh, I mean, I mean, I was playing over the board. These moves and all, I was playing over the board. But later on, when I checked my analysis, actually I had uh, until this bishop c8, yeah, in my wow. prep, yeah, <laughs> and I had rook d6 at this point, yeah. This was your preparation, so, but over the board. This was my preparation from this. This was my preparation from uh, 2014, yeah. This was like uh, I had seen until rook d6 and uh, how it was winning and so on. But the thing, you know, like uh, as you said, uh, this uh, line it was already like uh, plus uh, when you play queen of seven, it's already plus one point five, yeah. So you really don't want to, you know, go until the end of the line and then uh, see, uh, uh, like uh, you want to not to memorize everything. I thought, okay, I'll figure it out on board the board, yeah. So that was the guys. Thing, this yeah. is this is the so, level of preparation, unbelievable. And I want to ask the viewers after king h eight, queen f seven. He took here. What is the move that Shashikiran played here? This is really a tremendous move that he came up with in this position. You see, if you count the material right now, black is a piece up. Black has three pieces. White has two. Uh, but he, you can take this piece if you like. Uh, but there's something better. There's a question from Manosij Basu who says. How much does correspondence game help in his preparation? Yeah, this is one of my questions also. He's an international master in uh, correspondence chess. Shashi, uh, and are you moving towards grandmaster title or how is it? I already have uh, one uh, GM now and uh, trying for another, uh, playing some tournaments. But uh, uh, they have raised the level right now. I mean, uh, previously the grandmaster title was a uh, little bit easier. Uh, over the years, uh, the grandmaster title has become really difficult because um, you probably need, even if you play a, a high category tournament, like uh, category, is, let's say 13 or 14, you probably still need something like plus two or plus three. Yeah. And it's not that easy to win three games in a very uh, strong tournament. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you, may, you may win one game, but uh, to win uh, two, three games in a tournament, it's uh, quite difficult. Yeah. And uh, uh, I would say it's more uh, uh, more about how you approach uh, correspondence chess. Correspondence chess is a uh, thing like uh, where you have to, before entering any line, you have to decide where you're exactly going. Yeah, You have to spend a lot of uh, time for opening research. Yeah, 
i think that is the reason i started playing correspondence uh, you know i i thought the, the extra uh, research would help my ot pitches and i think it has helped me a lot yeah in a way that uh, you have to make uh, decisions uh, looking far into the future let's say so you took uh, correspondence chess as a means to improve your over the board chess not like on its own yeah, but uh, well, also it, it happened uh, by uh, a little bit of accident because uh, i think it was in 2013 after the the world championship i was helping anand and uh, after the world championship i uh, you know spending like uh, a month uh, for the world championship and working like uh, 16 to 17 hours every day and probably very little amount of sleep uh, for, for for the whole month i was feeling really tired and uh, really was not in a mood to play any tournament yeah so basically i was sitting at home for like really two three months and during that period i kind of got uh, a little bit bored okay let me start uh, playing correspondence and so on yeah that's how it came up so when sashikiran gets bored of chess he goes to chess <laughs> so but correspondence chess amazing and uh, you know i i remember sashi i don't know if you remember this uh, uh, let me just get you here this is uh, one of those moments uh, where you know not this moment as such but this event maharashtra chess league where you can see sashi kiran sitting there right in the center uh, and we uh, and myself on the left there we were in one team and on one of the days Shashi said that I'm going to uh, work with all of you guys, and that was a big, big thing for us because you know you get to see what a top level player is like. And Shashi, if you remember, you had shown us some of your notes. Uh, I believe it was in Meran itself because there was Shardul yeah. <laughs> uh, who was interested in Meran, I think, uh, at that point, and we discussed. And unbelievable quantum of analysis was there. I mean, is this? common i don't even remember now but if you made it into a book it could have been around a 100 page book or maybe more no oh, uh, see uh, the thing is uh, this kind of things uh, it keeps evolving yeah you know uh, sometimes uh, especially this opening preparation part is very very uh, tricky and now it has become even more trickier that uh, uh, stockfish has absorbed uh, this uh, similar to lila lila yeah so it's a it's a thing that uh, keeps uh, evolving yeah you know uh, you can analyze a lot of uh, stuff uh, but uh, to pick out what is actually relevant like what will actually happen over the board yeah that is the most uh, important thing the top players want yeah if you want to, like something if you want to you know when you have something that is like uh, really relevant and then try to remember only that is uh, relevant during the game yeah in fact uh, i think the the world championship work is basically something like similar to that yeah you know you can analyze a lot of things you can produce a lot of analysis with the computer but uh, to pick out what is exactly relevant and uh, to to make it make it cogent and then you know why such and such moves are being played why you have to analyze uh, if you are even going into some direction and then to uh, just to you know like the uh, the the player the player analyzing the line has to understand why he is going into such and such line uh, direction yeah. mm-hmm. so that is uh, the thing so now now it's even more relevant yeah because uh, you can produce any, any amount of analysis with the computer yeah but uh, you have to to remember what what has to be remembered yeah, yeah. so that yeah, is some more relevant part yeah. guys if you prepare a lot and you have so much so much analysis how do you remember all these stuff uh, is there a way in which you do it sashi or is it like just repetition um uh, it's a repetition but uh, sometimes you can make a kind of a small uh, uh, this thing yeah like uh, you can make a small uh, note kind of thing yeah like even if you let's say your uh, uh analysis like something like 1000 uh, moves or something let's say line moves and then you pick out uh, what is uh, relevant stuff that you need to remember i mean probably uh, uh in the sense that uh, this has evolved for me as well yeah generally when i uh, see something that has uh, 
more than let's say a plus one or something i would say okay this stuff i can just uh, figure out uh, figure it out over the board so i kind of uh, uh, decide okay only things i probably feel like if you have thousand lines i just pick out what you i need to remember like i with some sometimes you cannot yeah. uh, go to the board without uh, you know remembering something some key ideas you have to remember so those things i pick out and then you try to make some kind of a small file or something so that you know just before going to the tournament you just revise that file and then go on. i have i remember and maybe it was a picture i saw or something where vishi had actually uh, taken pictures of critical positions of his opening and when in the flight he often goes through those positions to remember uh, his like yeah i think everybody makes uh, some kind of or any top player makes uh, some kind of uh, idea you know to uh, to remember uh, these things because uh, repetition has to be done especially before a tournament you have to repeat otherwise uh, there's a lot of good chances to uh, forget but uh, it all depends on uh, how uh, everybody feels about it i generally feel quite uh, i mean i can remember most of the details when i see it over the board yeah when i have my pieces and then i move them over the board and then okay. you know feel okay. that position and then that way it's a little bit old school because nowadays people really don't uh, use the board that much <sighs> but uh, for me uh, moving the pieces over the board uh, also in a sense i uh, sometimes uh, you have a lot of questions like okay when you analyze so much yeah when when the, when you move the pieces over the board you have a lot of other questions what if my opponent is going there maybe some something is uh, changing some some i uh, something i need to find and so on so it's uh, it's it's i think it's an individual choice i don't think it there is there can be any specific uh, recipe or true, something true. everybody has to make their own own call on how they best remember things yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. and guys in the chat very strong players they all have found the move rook to e1 taking advantage of this back rank idea because if you take queen f8 is a checkmate uh, and i think uh, th- after this black is in trouble <clears throat> because rook d8 is met with queen e7 attacking the rook and then we i mean transpose to the game yeah I, this was also uh, an interesting moment because you know uh, when i played rook even like the next board was adiban he was really happy uh, i mean he was like <laughs> he was it was showing on his face yeah adiban was like anna anna can i adiban adiban could not contain himself yeah he was like like Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> <You're not laughs> Anna, can I play your moves, Anna? Is this <laughs> Adiban would have been very happy? Yeah, yeah, amazing. No, I mean, I, I could see that. Uh, I mean, yes, like he was shaking his head. Yes, okay. Now, it's, uh, now this is our point. Yeah. <laughs> so um, no, but uh, it's a uh, quite an interesting big game because it's still not uh, obvious. Like, okay, I mean, you feel uh, uh, for me, okay, now now that I know the result and so on. Over the board, it was not obvious at all. Yeah, in the sense because uh, first of all, I'm a piece down, and okay, I'm getting the piece back. But uh, even after I get the piece back, I think it was not very obvious. Yeah, yeah. because so, he took on f two, but here once yeah, again, so, uh, you found a very good move, which was rook to e eight. I think yeah. just exchanging the last defender and uh, takes check. You gave a check here, repeated, uh, very. actually i i i mean it was a kind of uh, uh, an insurance kind of uh, thing yeah because uh, i had actually more time and uh, for me it would have uh, made the sense to you know to put him in more uh, time trouble like i i think he was playing in the last 2 uh, 3 minutes or so and um, for me i had something close to um, 8 minutes ah, so repeating was actually uh, not no, no. even 10 minutes yeah. i had like 8 minutes more than my opponent yeah at this point yeah but then you know i thought okay i i felt that this portion is winning and uh, really didn't want to you know mess it up in time trouble yeah so i said okay even if it reaches the control i don't mind i just have to win this mm-hmm. game yeah yeah f6 so uh, and uh, after only after f6 it became clear that i was like you know uh, just uh, winning yeah completely check yeah. king g8 check king get 7 f7 yeah i think probably queen f5 check would have been much easier like yeah yes queen f5 just uh, 
just wins on the spot here. Yeah. If here, then F7 just. F7 check, yeah. And he went, you went F7, he took on G3, but you made a queen and he had to resign. So yeah, one of, uh, this is one of uh, your favorite games. I mean, you would put it up at the top with Krasenko game. Yeah, mostly because uh, it was not, not uh, uh, okay, Krasenko is already like, uh, you know, uh, how much, like 16 years or something. Yeah. yeah. So now this is a more uh, recent game and uh, definitely it has to uh, get more credit. Actually, in the chat, we have... Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's, but it's, uh, it's uh, very difficult for me to compare, yeah. But this uh, two pawns on the 6th and 7th rank, it's a uh, very famous game, yeah. This uh, Labordan is uh, game, yeah. Where uh, there were pawns on the 7th Yeah, the, old, and, uh, the old game, the uh, classic. Uh, three games. The old game, yeah. Classic, yeah. Three, three yeah, pawns, three, sorry. Three, three pawns. pawns. Yeah, and here is only two pawns and uh, had only a bishop and two pawns for the queen. Yeah, so it's very hard to compare uh, this stuff. But uh, I think both games are uh, uh, definitely in probably you know, like some of my best. True, games, true. Yeah. By the way, there was a point where Shashi said, you know, he he loves to have like over the board feel, and uh, you know, Shashi. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but there's this famous uh, photographer. His name is David Lada. Yeah, yeah, uh, and he says you are one of his favorite people to photograph during tournaments. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I probably because uh, I'm more uh, expressive in the board. Yeah, kind of. There is a lot of emotions. A yeah. lot, a lot. I mean, and also at the start, you can see this is one of the things. I think one of the things that you like very much is to have your pieces very nicely organized before the game. Like you adjust them very carefully. And you make sure there's no uh, sort of strand of hair or dust or dirt on. Yeah, the... that, that is why? Why is that? Like, like uh, the, uh, is this something from childhood? No. Uh, uh, okay. The Olympiad is. Uh, it's a generally a lot of uh, players uh, playing. Yeah, and uh, in the tournaments uh, you're playing uh, in different boats all the time, and uh, sometimes you know uh, there is a. a the people have hair fall, fall on the board, so. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit dusty. Okay, it happens. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not like uh, uh, no, it happens. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah, so so it makes uh, some kind of. Uh, I mean, when you when you playing over the board, it feels a little bit hard, and if you have to put a night over dust, yeah, That's true. just to keep it uh, clean. Yeah. yeah, look at this one. Yeah, uh, th this picture is special, not just because of any expressions. Of course, it's very intense. But the chessboard in your eyes, there. Okay, now you can look at that. The, the, the entire no, chessboard no, can be seen. So it's beautifully captured. Uh, also, this is one of uh, pictures that Amruta has taken, and my favorite ones where you you can see the intensity with which he is looking at the chessboard. Um, how is it that you are so concentrated? Do you indulge in a certain concentration exercise, or it comes naturally to you on the board? Oh, uh, concentration. I, I do okay, yoga, but uh, as far as uh, this uh, over the board, uh, I'm mostly even while walking uh, uh, in the tournament hall, I'm generally thinking about my position. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm if I'm if I'm watching uh, for some other game or something, then uh, I'm trying to remember my uh, analysis on the on the whatever has been played yeah so how i can connect with uh, even if other players games if i'm even i'm watching i am trying to connect whether i had seen that position or something new has happened yeah it is uh, i think it's kind of uh, natural yeah and uh, also in the sense that uh, home i try to uh, discipline myself uh, by trying to you know uh, work for uh, longer period of time yeah uh, you know sashi one thing which i see is like all the top players of course uh, in the world and also in indian chess they are great players but they often have some other interest they do a lot of uh, i mean at least do some other things but I, in your case i i don't knew, know you very well but i believe that chess is somehow the the centerpiece of your life in such a way that you know it takes up all your time almost is that true um, uh, in the sense, uh, I generally like, like to read uh, a lot apart from uh, this thing. So, uh, 
I really have a big uh, collection of uh, books that I want to read. And sometimes I think, okay, well, sometimes you want to read, uh, I mean, go through the books again. A lot of, uh, but mostly uh, reading and uh, what are you reading right before, now? Uh, before uh, before Corona, I was playing badminton. Badminton ah. is, uh, uh, of course, uh, quite. Uh, it's more for physical exercise, but it's a, it's a hobby, and uh, I really enjoy playing. Guys, badminton. If there is anyone in chess and who can beat me in badminton, I think it's Shashi. He is he is good. He is very strong. I played with him once in Pune, but we we didn't get much time to play. But I think you are you are a very good badminton player. I, I generally play for physical fitness, so uh, that's what I. That's what you know. Even what you do, like apart from chess, is to help your chess at the end of the day. Yeah, but uh, it is very difficult to uh, not uh, uh, think of uh, other areas because uh, generally it is quite connected. Yeah, I mean, for instance, any physical fitness you are generally doing it for chess. You have to keep uh, a good uh, physical uh, shape, and uh, if I'm doing yoga, then uh, basically you have to keep a good mindset. Yoga keeps you uh, grounded. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, it is necessary to have a proper uh, attitude towards the tournament, and uh, so I, yeah, that, of course, uh, chess uh, it's the main thing. Yeah, so I kind of try to. Uh, uh, connect everything with chess yeah so even if i do something about it like uh, i'm thinking is it really helping my chess and so on yeah? mm. so some so it's a for instance reading yeah reading when i read uh, some uh, self help books so i try to connect uh, how how uh, i mean how this is going to help my chess and so on it's always like uh, it has to do with chess true, true. So you cannot really say that uh, I have. To, I mean, I have some interest. Let's say, okay, I play badminton or I really enjoy reading. And uh, sometimes uh, there is a lot of uh, board games we play at home. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, even when I'm playing uh, board games, let's say any any game for that matter, uh, say Stratago or uh, let's say it is always thinking. Okay, I mean. Yeah, I whether uh, it's mostly like uh, whether I'm even when I'm trying to play the board game and playing with full concentration, always you know to improve even in that board game. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like uh, uh, yeah, I I I completely believe in this one uh, percent uh, improvement. Yeah, this uh, recently I read the Atomic Habits by James Clear. He says like you know you improve one percent every day. Like at the end of the year, like, like you're uh, improving somewhere close to some 30 to 33 percent or something like this. Yeah. So, yeah. So that uh, I think I believe in. Like for instance, even for uh, some small such things such as games, where you know you're just uh, spending uh, time with your family and so on. Even those games I play extremely seriously. So yeah. don't you think at some point it becomes a bit too serious? Like I know that you. Yeah, it, it is it, it is uh, serious, but uh, it somehow it's part of my character, and it's very difficult to you know to take uh, uh, that out of it. Yeah, I have I have to improve it. Everything that has become kind of uh, if I don't improve, then uh, it, it it kind of becomes uh, uh, not very interesting for me. So I I have to have the feeling that I'm improving in that. Game also, yeah. So I have to play it seriously. This is an yeah. amazing attitude. Is this something that was instilled to you since childhood by your dad, or how was uh, it? Like, uh, how did this come I, into you? Yeah, I think it's the it's a, it came from my father, yeah, Ras Krishna. And uh, whenever we went to tournaments when I was younger, yeah, so he would generally say, like, okay, you just play the tournament, and uh, if you win, you get a point, yeah, and if you lose. And you learn from that game. So basically, you're gaining from uh, like whatever you, whatever be the result, you are you are gaining from that game. Yeah. Amazing. So that uh, has been the like the the main idea of right from the beginning. Yeah. So it has been like ingrained now more or less. Tremendous. And whenever like my my whenever we are playing this board game, some my me and my dad we discuss uh, strategy. Yeah. 
that board game we discuss strategy even now here yeah. like okay i mean what is what is better and what is not uh, uh, what you should do it doesn't so need, need to be chess yeah it can be anything it doesn't, it doesn't need to be chess it, it can be any <laughs> game but we, but but we still discuss whether this is the better strategy or that is a better strategy you have a choice yeah like okay i mean we are generally discussing this stuff yeah, yeah yeah and and when you do this like this is one picture over here where you know you are here with your daughter there right in the center yeah. do you do that yeah, yes, deepens yeah. wedding this is a long time ago now your daughter uh, would have grown i think nearly 5 years ago uh, what's her name deepika 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 yeah. do you also do the same with your daughter or how is it like uh, yeah I, i i think it is i we are also trying to do the same with my daughter and it's very uh, tough on her yeah i think it is not uh, not an uh, not a uh, easy way because uh, sometimes you know like uh, kids want to you know just uh, play the game as such you know, i spend the time with uh, their parents and so on you know not to bother uh, too much about the result or the strategy or whatever that may be yeah but uh, this uh, it is not easy for me to you know to get uh, rid of uh, this analyzing stuff uh, so easy yeah it is very uh, tough uh, for my daughter yeah but i i, I try to you know instill this uh, habit within her with uh, with her uh, consciously because i think it's a it's a good way you know you analyze your stuff uh, many times you analyze your character you analyze your uh, what everyday stuff uh, that is i think the the way to you know improve any skill for that matter yeah not not only chess uh, any basically and you have to keep analyzing your uh, your day to day activities so that whether you are spending the time correctly yeah. because time is yeah. very limited true. yeah true so. and what about your wife how is her uh, radhika uh, is she also similar in this mindset or she is <laughs> uh def- definitely not yeah but uh, i have she says that i have to go easy on my daughter yeah like i mean our on our daughter so it is uh, quite uh, um uh it's a, it's a, it's a not not easy yeah i'm a basically a serious person and she's also serious but uh, when she when she comes to play games she just want to you know like uh, the kid they enjoy and you know not to take uh, these even this little things too seriously yeah and it's a, it's a, some kind of uh, a small clash but um, it's uh, hard to you know uh hard to change uh, these things uh, especially when you know it has been uh, come to me like from my childhood yeah so it, sometimes you know i try to let it go yeah i try but it's, it's not, not easy. All, all, always happening it's happening. not easy <laughs> well well uh, i hope that next time we play a game <clears throat> you will let it go against me not in chess apart from chess <laughs> but uh, i i have heard that radhika has also helped you in chess and uh, she uh, she does some of uh, yeah. can can you tell us she is not a chess player yeah as such yeah she is not a, a chess player but uh, uh, for instance uh, uh, well uh, there are a lot of other uh, things that uh, she helps me for instance the logistics yeah all this uh, traveling and um, uh, you know where to stay and that all this stuff i just tell her okay i mean let me like uh, i tell her okay just book me flights where you know where i kind of uh, when when i would like to travel i generally like to travel through the day yeah never uh, in the night yeah because i find it quite uh, uh i mean dip when you are switching time zones i think it's very easy if you have you travel through the day yeah. like when you go to europe and so on yeah you start in the morning and you reach uh, europe in the evening it's kind of easier life you can just go to directly go to sleep and then recover the next day and so mm-hmm. on yeah so generally when i say this this kind of things mostly logistics she takes care of yeah all the logistics part and uh, also uh, uh, studies yeah uh, deepika studies uh, she is mostly doing this stuff okay i once in a while help a little bit uh, like uh, uh, math or uh, english is, uh, sometimes i do help but uh, all the other subjects uh, radhika is uh, taking care of and also my dad is also uh, teaching uh, hindi to deepika wow. so so a lot of uh, radhika's uh, contribution is uh, very difficult to you know estimate yeah. there's a lot of other things so it's not like just uh, 
studies, my kids' studies or logistics or something. It's very, uh, and also a lot of emotional support, especially when things are not going uh, uh, well. Yeah, that kind of. Uh, so it's uh, it you cannot really I cannot really put uh, no, I, uh, exact I, estimate kind of thing. It's uh, almost total. I support, can only yeah. imagine what support she would have because you know Shashi at the age of forty you are so inspired, motivated, and right into the game. You need a strong support team. Yeah, otherwise it's it's yeah, never it's easy. Very 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 important that your uh, family supports. Yeah, S- team yes, but at uh, most uh, yes, family. If your family is uh, very supportive, I think uh, it makes a big uh, difference. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Before we go to some more questions, I have your next game. Uh, this one. Uh, no, no, <laughs> not this game. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I am not really sure I want to see this game. Uh, okay, I mean, it happened. Uh, it, uh, this thing was... Uh, I, I can but, only uh, say that Shashi respects Vishy Anand so much that he doesn't want to see this game on stream. But uh, Shashi, this was actually an important game in your career, yes? Uh, in a way where, you know... Uh, uh, <laughs> It was, uh, it, it, it was, uh, okay, I mean, uh, this game has been uh, uh, quoted many times because of the Bishop on yes, his seven, yes. yeah, got uh, stuck uh, at the end of the game, yeah, and, uh, well, what can I say, like, uh, okay, the, the game is actually a, a big, uh, not, not not a very accurate game, but uh, at some point, uh, yeah, after this, it's probably, for instance, uh, rookie data was just a blunder from Manand, yeah. So he could have played the something else, maybe something A3 or something perhaps at this point. Mm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I, I still think with the bishop on its own, it's quite difficult position. But uh, he immediately blundered this pawn. Yeah, after rook a3, it was just uh, uh, just winning for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, rook a4 was because just winning for me. Now, if rook takes d4, there is an intermediate check, and then yeah. you pick up the. Yeah, this main. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, rook is and main. also rook a b8, uh, queen a1. This this really this point. Yeah, this position this position is just winning for me. Yeah. Where uh, f6, yeah, this bishop getting trapped was I think very. Uh, you don't see it often. It's a very interesting one. Yeah, and uh, I think this was uh, quoted in uh, Gelfand's book. Yeah, or one of the. This uh, I think uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, positional decision making. One of, one of the decision making. Positional decision making. Yeah. Right. Positional, positional decision making. And uh, also, I think uh, Shankland also wrote. But that, that is, that is uh, it's a kind of. Uh, well, what can I say? Okay. It's. Uh, uh, it also. Uh, okay. It made a difference because, in the sense, like uh, I had uh, this uh, feeling that I could. Uh, big uh, strong place yeah so that was the only uh, thing about uh, this game yeah. yeah also this was not just yeah, this so game it, right it was a knockout match with uh, Vishy no 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 it was ah, not, not knockout this was one, this was one of the league ah, games sure. yeah I had to buy and uh, it is to Anand's credit that actually he qualified from the knockout uh, after, even after beating Anand they did not qualify from the knockout and Anand uh, qualified from the knockout and then he won and he won the tournament eventually he beat Kazim in the final yeah, yeah. Yeah, so here and uh, well, this this is a very, uh, I think. Yeah, it, it changed something. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing is like uh, when you beat a twenty seven hundred guy, and then it, it changes your approach towards the game. Yeah, now that you know that you can beat strong players, then you uh, radically changes the approach towards the game. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, Vishy being such a such a great player um, and such a champion. Uh, I have to ask you this, you know, Shashi, uh, when in 2007, when you crossed 2700, uh, you were 26 years old at that point. Um, and and how, how was the feeling at that point, you know, because you were right up there, you were world top 20 and uh, 2700, you had, you were the only second one. How much of it was inspired by Vishy? Most of the thing is mostly inspired by Vishy. Yeah. For instance, uh, see, uh, right now you had, uh, you, uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, he, uh, he generally takes a lot of uh, interest in uh, uh, young persons. For instance, recently he has been working a little bit with Pratnananda, Bukesh, and uh, everybody. Yeah. Yes. So even while uh, 
like i was like let's say uh, 2400 or something we still uh, used to you know like i used to uh, you know just i mean i used to visit this place and then we discussed uh, a lot of chess things it's uh, it has been a re- it has been a regular feature of uh, anand yeah like uh, to you know to encourage young players yeah so uh, uh, i i think uh, it's mostly due to wishy yeah, all this uh, because uh, in the 90s i mean when i was uh, taking up chess let's say 1990 91 those uh, years yeah he was already at the top yeah i mean he was playing the uh, regular e1 regular emilia and uh, so on yeah so basically the inspiration came from him like you know you see one of your uh, fellow indians uh, going to the top and uh, and uh, it is uh, it gives you the feeling that uh, that is possible for other indians as well yeah so the main inspiration is uh, all from vishwanath anand yeah, yeah huge huge thing and actually uh, if if you look at uh, shashi's victories anand was not the only top player he had beaten here is one game which i believe is one of the finest uh, efforts at on in rook end game in a way uh, and i w- i want to just uh, i don't i don't think even an entire stream of 4 hours would be enough to analyze this end game because it's so complex but just your thoughts when you reach such a position uh, because it's kind of what was what were you thinking and you're playing a world class opponent levon aronian who might be at that point i think uh, top top 5 yeah, in that, the world yeah this uh, this end game no uh, this was one of the uh, uh, team championships yeah so basically uh, what uh, left sack is that time coach of indian team he told me was just play the game normally yeah don't uh, do anything rash or something and um, it was uh, with this idea in the mind uh, basically was playing this game throughout not taking any big risk and all i just trying to you know keep the position as normal as possible here basically and this was this is one of the moments uh, when i took this pawn yeah i understood what was happening was like uh, there was no risk for me i mean he has an extra pawn on the king side and uh, my king is also placed on the same thing yeah so basically i cannot lose this in game whatsoever yeah, yeah. Mm. and uh, and there is a possibility that i can harass this uh, uh, his pawns yeah on the king side yeah and probably win one of those pawns yeah i mean uh, the position is a draw yeah and eventually there were, i mean he had he, he missed uh, this draw yeah so basically uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, it, Uh, chess uh, that was required for uh, team championship you try to play you know not to take any big risk or something you try to put some pressure on your opponent and uh, i think i i did this quite all right in this game yeah i mean uh, he was always under pressure a little bit of pressure and uh, finally when uh, uh, if he had uh, played correctly the rook and pawn game would have been drawn yeah. so and uh, well uh, Of course, I'm uh, happy to win uh, a game against uh, Levon Aronian. Yeah. yeah, and this is such a nice uh, game because you make use of this very fact that now the pawns are also equal, but you have an outside passer. Then you switch over to the other side, and then even though material is now equal, just the very fact that his pawns are slightly weak and the king is far away, uh, this yeah. starts to show. And I believe that uh, in the end, you you won this end game. Uh, it was fantastic i mean to to beat such a strong player with such a technical effort it's it's not easy uh, and uh, i think that's you know it's games like these you know shashi which makes me call you and this i have been always saying and you also mentioned this how to be solid at the same time ambitious like uh, dravid yeah here you say the wall of indian chess it's it's tremendous uh what what you have achieved and guys uh, also shashi has played the most number of games for indian team at the olympiad which is a huge huge number i think you you played just about every olympiad from 2004 is it uh, or no sorry uh, 2016 i missed i think otherwise i played more or less uh, oh. and uh, yeah 20 was an online olympiad so yeah so that is that and uh, you know talking about olympiads here is the one of the biggest moments for indian chess 
when uh, the entire team won the bronze medal uh, you can see shashi right there in the center uh, the most experienced in the team there was parimarjan negi coach rb ramesh adiban setu raman and lalit babu how, how was that moment shashi to get the bronze that is uh, it's not easy to describe that moment yeah especially uh, also i got a yes. silver medal for uh, my board on, on board three yeah and uh, it's a big uh, i mean you know the, the first medal is always uh, uh, it's a different feeling yeah i mean i have of course uh, take this uh, moment to congratulate our colleagues on the gold medal last year yeah a gold medal is always a gold medal you never uh, it's uh, something else yeah but still uh, uh, oh, this uh, the first medal is also making a big uh, difference because you know we have been playing the olympiad as a big history and uh, you guys i mean like you know you start as something something as 19 see i think we were like uh, not, uh, not at least not in not even in the top 10 and then when you finish in uh, the top 3 yeah it is always a big feeling yeah it is not uh, it's a, we were like i mean we did not really could not believe that moment like this has happened yeah like uh, but uh, it, it is not it did not happen overnight yeah it, there was a lot of preparation involved yeah you cannot uh, i mean that the team was working working in perfect sync yeah i mean every day like uh, uh, stedu was playing fantastic through the tournament and he just missed the boat place by whisker yeah and he also made plus 5 on board too and uh, parimarjan negi was uh, playing fantastic on top board and uh, he beat uh, a few strong guys uh, he lost a few games but it was a uh, very tough opponent yeah tough opponent. and he was holding his own and uh, adiban adiban was like you know uh, he, i i think probably i think all of uh, like would have like, had like seven or eight losing positions and then he saved single every single one of them yeah and lalit we, we did not give him that many games like maybe you have played the two or three games but uh, whenever like when I, he he was like you know helping everybody yeah so and uh, of course he cannot uh, 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 it's where ramesh uh, the contribution we cannot uh, this thing it's very hard to you know translate into words because he always put us in the right mood yeah like he put the team in the we all the team always used to go together for walks and he always said you know just uh, you know all the people are playing you know decently nobody is in bad shape so it is important you know you just keep playing keep pressing and uh, that's what we eventually did here yeah. and uh, i was quite happy to win a key game against the nisipiano in the penalty net round yeah this was i think one of my best efforts yeah ah against nisipiano yeah yeah so so that would be one of your uh... <clears throat> for sure yeah this was uh, because uh, first of all i won with black and uh, winning with black in a team tournament is i think it's uh, quite a difficult thing yeah yeah uh, just to and uh, before that germany has not had not lost any uh, game yeah. and uh, my win with black decided the uh, match in our favor yeah. black and just very quickly uh, it was a slav which is slav has been one of your central uh, openings of your yeah, repertoire yeah, yeah. Been, uh, yeah, for sure yeah. and uh, he i think nisipiano chose a very solid uh, setup with white yes yeah 9 bd7 b4 Right of six, take take. At uh, this point, already like you know, uh, we have like a uh, normal position, and uh, it, it can clear that he wants to go everything on the queen side. Yeah, and uh, I had to do something on the. King yeah, side, he's yeah. doing some form of this uh, minority attack, like of thing, which will leave you with one weakness. A little bit of uh, more, more like space, but okay. And, but the bishop on f five, and uh, it's uh, not it, it's stopping group d one, so it's. Uh, not entirely clear but uh, i had to play i had to create play somewhere yeah and it starts up for some time yeah you instance. put your queen on c7 and then you got your knight here so you're clearly angling for e5 break uh maybe but uh, it depends yeah. uh, how <laughs> and you went h o oh. okay so basically e5 is possible here but you didn't go for it yeah i was thinking probably put a piece on d4 and maybe my attack will get a little bit slow yeah 
and uh, not uh, uh, sure where I am, what would happen. Yeah, like uh, so, H five is quite a quite a quite a decent one. I, I really want to go um, maybe H four, H three, perhaps like in the you know what uh, Alpha Zero has been doing uh, quite uh, recently. Mm. Yeah, just gaining a little bit of space, and also there is no more no more. background ideas yeah and this shows this next move shows one of the things which uh, is really amazing about shashi he just went back knight f6 accepting that <laughs> that knight d7 was not a good move which is not easy i mean you could have said e5 let me justify your move, my move knight d7 but you went back Yeah, but that that I do quite often. Yeah, even like when uh, Seru annotated his game against Gelf and he also mentioned this. Yeah. I kind of uh, I play to the position more like uh, sometimes I make mistakes I simply accept them over over the board yeah it is uh, I think it's a new story it, it, it yeah, also just, brings uh, to this point like you know it's uh, I I maybe I'm reading it too deep but it shows like lack of ego in a way like you are not really saying oh I should always be right yes I can be wrong and I can correct my mistake yeah it is possible yeah. Uh, Once I think also I I did the same thing against uh, Apopia. Uh, I think I played the knight f4 or something, and then uh, he went back with some move or something, and then I couldn't find anything better. Then I simply came back knight x5. Yeah, just uh, yeah, giving two moves for free. Yeah, but it happens. Yeah, uh, many times it has happened in my games. Uh, yeah, also uh, I think once against Tipsey as well. Yeah, I played knight d3. He attacked with rook e3. I couldn't find anything better. I simply came back knight c5. Yeah, just uh, many times. Yeah, it's so. Uh, so I mean, already is, I put it. Like, is it uh, this game? I I don't know. Uh, I just I just collected this picture. It it I found it from an old Hindu newspaper. But okay, that I think you are white there. Yeah, this game. No, no, I was. Ah, so is this the one? So it could be this game. It, it could be the game. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, it was some open defense. Yeah. So. Nice. It it could be the game, but uh, uh, it is uh, well. What can I say? It's uh, it's a quality. Sometimes uh, you have to uh, you know accept uh, that uh, things have not gone your way, and then you have to try to you know try to make the best of uh, uh, things. Yeah. Right, right. So knight f six, f three, f three, bishop h six, and you started creating some uh, play on this king side with your pieces. Rook a five. Queen e6, King f2, uh, g5 was played, preparing to open the files on the king side with. G5. Yeah, I think here already uh, some serious uh, initiative has started. Right. Because uh, uh, his attack has not uh, uh, like uh, I mean he has not reached anything the proportion I mean and I am already uh, trying to open from files in g4 and h4 and so on. Yeah, so. He had already uh, some small problems, perhaps. I mean, yeah. I think probably more easier to play black. Yeah. Mm. So knight c one, g four, n d three, and here you took. Uh, maybe it was okay to keep up the pressure, but you took here and king h eight, which was a very strong move, getting the rook in. And it's very uh, nice to like you see how white was way ahead when it came to creating play on the queen side with. C five B four, but then he just couldn't move forward while you have made so much inroads on the king side. Yeah, yeah, no, no king side. Yeah. Takes bishop B one, rook went back to the G five. So again, you see that uh, it doesn't matter for me that uh, the rook is on A eight. I simply move back. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just uh, <laughs> whatever is, I I think it's what what is more relevant. It's uh, somehow I think it's a useful quality one should have. Yeah, like okay, if you feel something is important. Then you should be glad to accept your mistakes and then just move on. You know, okay. Very nice. Very important. At least for chess, I would say in in general it's very important quality. But in chess, it translates into points. Bishop takes e3, rook e1. Yeah, I think it's already gone and now uh, because uh, you cannot defend this uh, weakness on d4. Yeah. Oh, nice move. Knight f8. Just the final uh, move here to come to e6. And this bishop end game equal, uh, I mean, pawn down in the same color bishop. This cannot be saved. Other than just lost. I think I remember watching this game, uh, and I was like, "Wow, this was really an important uh, victory." 
that for for team india and as you said with black pieces against a player of nisipianos caliber is fantastic fantastic one so i have a question uh, here which is that you won uh the olympiad i mean you won the bronze medal at the olympiad the indian team won and you also have won the gold medal at asian games in 2006 yeah. which one would you call more more special it's very difficult to you know to make a, a comparison like this because um, uh when i won the gold medal in 2006 yeah i also crossed 2700 for the first time yeah. it was like uh, two jumps at the same time but uh, when um, uh when uh, this uh, olympiad medal happened yeah it was uh, more of a team effort yeah so you kind of uh, of course uh, this asian games was also a team effort but not that many players only three players yeah and uh, it was also a, a nice uh, team effort in sense like every day hari and myself we used to go for a run ah. and generally there was a good uh, uh, team spirit we used to prepare together every day like uh, myself hambi and hari every day we sit over and then uh, in the night we we'll prepare like uh, until the uh, next day next day tomorrow we'll discuss what the strategy and so on i think both of them are quite uh, good uh, team efforts but uh, in a way uh, an olympiad uh, medal can still be is quite possible but uh, this asian game they have taken out uh, chess as uh, this thing so until no, but, uh, chess I think 2022 is, they are bringing it back yeah I, that's what i read i hope so. I, i really hope so yeah because um, india has uh, one, one of the best chances to make it to the gold medal in asia yeah. it's quite uh, clear yeah and it was uh, quite a pity that uh, asian games was not there in um, let's say 2014 or something yeah yeah I think 2006, 2010, it's uh, we still won a bronze medal, but the 2014 uh, it was taken out uh, uh, from from the Asian Games, yeah, and it was not certainly not a right decision. Yeah, uh, I I remember that you were awarded uh, rupees twenty lakh as a as as a prize for from the government when you won Asian Games medal. Is, is that true in 2006? Yes, uh, an Asian Games med- medal is generally quite. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, and there is a lot of uh, uh, what can I say? In- incentives for uh, from the state government for Asian Games. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the uh, the money point of it. Okay, it is uh, it is part uh, when you're playing the game. But uh, more than the money point, you know, it feels quite uh, happy that when you're representing a uh, uh, country for uh, for so many other Indians. it always makes a big uh, you know big happiness that you play for you are representing so many people yeah and then when you may win a medal for uh, it is always like you know like okay this feeling is cannot uh, be so i i really cannot compare that to tournaments yeah it's uh, two different things and each one is special in its own way yeah yeah, yeah. true true amazing so this i mean generally people will have one such amazing moment in their life but you have had several uh... <laughs> no i mean it's very hard to like uh, 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 see these things but uh, I, i i sometimes you know you, have, you cannot make uh, a choice between one or uh, this or uh, two stuff it, it can be like uh, no because uh, mainly because you know both these tournaments i was playing the uh, uh, at a very high uh, level yeah like uh, for instance uh, when i when i when i played asian games 2006 i was like 26 75 yeah and then i played at uh, like uh, uh, I, i scored i think 8 out of 9 in the tournament and uh, the next list i was 2700 25 points in one event yeah and uh, the other tournament also i made plus 5 on board 3 Uh, and uh, heavily heavy scoring yeah and uh, and uh, we have the medal yeah the first uh, bronze medal for in, in the history of uh, chess olympics for india yeah so 
basically uh, let, let's, very, let's keep uh, it as e- both pleasant <laughs> let's, let's, let's keep it as equal yeah. let's keep it as equal yeah. in the chat we have rb ramesh who wishes you a happy birthday and says tromso nisi piano game memorable occasion thank you thank so you. how about this game against shabalo alexander we know he is a very very uh, creative player again at the olympiad and you go on move number 1 we know you as an opening expert we know now that you prepare like huge amount of opening theory and all of it and there you go and play b3 what was the logic uh i actually this has happened uh, quite um, often yeah and sometimes you know uh uh you feel that uh uh you cannot really compete on uh, equal terms with uh, uh, let's say for instance when i played anand yeah in hyderabad in yeah, 2002 i had the same uh, idea yeah. i went knight of 3 g3 all this ready kind of stuff yeah i was not completely sure about myself being uh, winning a theoretical battle against somebody who's so strong as anand yeah so i said okay maybe let me try something off the yeah knight of 3 g3 and then you know transfer the the weight of the I mean the game into the, the middle game, yeah, rather than the opening game. Yeah, where I mean it was quite uh, difficult. Like somebody who has played so many games at the top level against so many against Kasparov and so on. It is uh, so was one of the reasons. And I think uh, B three was also uh, similar. I used to play B three quite often, and uh, it was not. Uh, uh, it's quite a fighting opening. Yeah, even uh, you see, still uh, Jabal was winning a lot of games with B three. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but this so was way uh, back yeah 21 years ago ah, this was way back yeah but uh, b3 was part of my report at the time ah, okay. so and i think in this game at a very key moment you made and i think this has been one of your uh, fortes uh, also here you sacked an exchange uh, with uh, but i'm not going to let let me ask uh, the audience guys what is the be- move here that shashi played with white uh, it's a very interesting move if you look at the position it's uh, equal material both sides have two bishops on the board black has a beautiful knight in the center white also has an aggressive knight here and also you can see d3 slightly weak so how did shashikiran continue here which kind of changed the the nature of the game ah J- jerani ramson uh yan christoph fantastic and i think uh, exchange sacrifice is something that comes very naturally to you yes shashi i yeah especially when it involves uh, square weaknesses yeah so it's kind of uh, this was already uh, um, i understood understood this uh, so when you have a fiance to fiance to and then if you don't have a pawn on e7 let's say yeah you have bishop and then you don't have a pawn on e7 and this is generally quite uh, good the exchange sacrifice yeah ah. if you sacrifice like okay i mean it is uh, of course uh, this was uh, taught to me like very young like my dad taught me like if you don't have uh, if you, if you have if you get out something and then if you have a pawn if you don't pawn on e2 or e7 corresponding so this uh, exchange sacrifice is generally quite uh, good compensation beautiful yeah. and this is a very important point which shashi kiran uh, shashi has mentioned which is like if the pawn was on e7 then these dark squares are sort of covered but the moment you move it the this square becomes weaker and you can sack an exchange here and uh, here you don't even really uh, have to go into specific lines right you can just play it more out of feel yeah but i, I think it's uh, also uh, okay here it's a little bit specific because the queen is very ready to come to h6 yeah Once I move the knight, queen is ready to pounce to head six. Yeah. So, so rook c eight. This was a little bit specific. Yeah. Rook d five. He gave a check. King h two. Queen c seven. Knight e four. And you can see how this exchange sacrifice has worked unbelievable. So beautifully, the queen is coming in, and after f five, queen h six came over. In fact, uh, Shabalo is well known for launching uh, dangerous attacks uh, against his opponents, and here Shashi. Uh, gave him a taste of his own medicine uh, i think if queen h7 here yeah takes and rook d7 take yeah. take rook d7 and that should be very game over yeah 
very nice game uh, i think one more thing in about you which you have always proudly uh won and and we can see on your screen itself right at the very top the ongc logo here also you have this logo i think you you really feel a sense of gratitude towards them yes definitely yeah because uh, one thing you know uh, it, uh, it's a completely uh, it's a little bit unheard of yeah and uh, i i i got i, I uh, of course i attended an interview and so on and before they picked me and just when i when i um, for instance uh, i when i was 18 yeah so they had uh, the uh, this uh, they were recruiting chess players i applied for the job and they recruited me yeah just out of school yeah like okay i mean once you are ready like you just out of school and uh, you know that time uh, and uh, it was uh, very uh, uh, nice of them to you know to let uh, the the player work from home yeah not to you know not to go office not to go to office every day it was uh, to allow the, the the player to to work on the game yeah i think it's very important yeah for uh, sports person yeah they should be given you know like uh, every uh, time available to 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 get to improve into themselves in the game yeah i think this is one of the the, the key uh, element yeah and uh, i very much like to you know to to mention this exact point like you know when when the sports persons have, they have enough time to develop their game and not bother about financial implications yeah it becomes like a big boost yeah completely different support altogether yeah absolutely yeah at the end of the day one of the things that chess players always worry about is whether they will be financially safe uh, in a way and if that worry yeah. is put off then they can focus on real improvement and not go running after you know oh, the small tournament yes. is happening there let me go and win some prize money in fact you would focus on the yeah. bigger goals in in your yes. this is very important is very good, yeah. and i think a huge thanks to to ngc for uh, also one more team which i think uh, i remember having read about it in uh, uh, in new in chess magazine uh, i think and it was you who had written that article if i'm not mistaken it was the team novi bor uh, winning uh, european club cup i don't know if it was you but at at what i did not read that article but uh, of course uh, it's uh, it's uh, my team in the check yes. uh, team champion it looks like a family and, somehow you uh, know look at look at the picture look at uh, very, very, very much a family we are very much a family there is a lot of uh, hari and uh, now vidit is also part of the team yeah so it is uh, very much a uh, 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 family kind of uh, thing and uh, quite uh, uh what can i say i mean when we won uh, the european club cup of course it was a, a completely uh, different feel of course so the, the, the team was playing uh, quite strongly as yeah, so and i think we won uh, after we even lost a match yeah i think even I mean, it happened uh, we lost a match and still we won the tournament i think yeah we won with six wins and one loss yeah something like this yeah right uh they probably check that result yeah but uh, yeah it's it's a great team and there is a lot of uh, and uh, what the chess team is generally doing is like after every game is uh, i mean all, all, all the games are finished we generally go to the restaurant somebody has a chess board we still analyze yeah after the games yeah what 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 is going on all the, the all the players you, you see there a lot of guys in the in the uh, top 100 yeah and still all of them are analyzing all all uh, either they're analyzing blindfold or they're analyzing uh, on the board as well so so very uh, great team yeah and uh, to the uh, all uh, credit to the sponsors and uh, the team captain bolak yeah a lot of uh, effort has gone yeah, you can see that it's a very nice mixture of czech players polish players and indian players And so yeah. it's a, it's a, and and they have somehow managed to make a team where everyone at least from what i know they like chess very much so you on the left you have victor lasnishka there then uh, that is peter boleslav if i'm not wrong uh, yes. then there is hari krishna shashi uh, david navara uh, matyush bartel and radoslav wojtashek that's that's the team uh, and uh, 
Eh, somehow this is a and they have uh, Rachek in India. It's been a Rachek. Ah, Rachek. Ah, on the right, yes. Yeah. 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 Rachek yeah. over there. And also Roman is sitting actually, so he is a kind of uh, sponsor. Okay. Okay. So this this team and uh, somehow do you think Shashi uh, that you uh, you become a very dangerous player in team tournaments because you see even <laughs> at the Olympiad or World Team Championship. Some of your biggest wins have come in those team events. Uh, is there some specific reason you think, or not really? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a thing. Uh, I somehow um, uh, when your uh, own result uh, affects the whole team, yeah, you play a little bit uh, more responsibly. Mm. Yeah. In general, uh, I I I see that uh, my uh, good results have been like uh, in team tournaments. Um, I think uh, one of the la uh, last time I played, one of the last times I played for no before I won uh, uh, one game against the. Uh, uh, this was uh, this was actually I won a Berlin end game. Yeah, uh -huh. Just, uh, I can remember this game. Uh -huh. This was in twenty nineteen. No, no, no. Before that, I think probably yeah. maybe twenty. Uh, uh, Two thousand seventeen, maybe. Yeah. Ah, two thousand. Probably against. Uh, it was in. Yeah, in, in, against uh, Abbas of yeah. Two thousand seventeen against Nijat Abbas of okay. yeah. It was in the last round. I won uh, Berlin in game, and uh, this was the. Well, what can I say? It's uh, something uh, similar. Like uh, you know, you have to play uh, a little bit more uh, responsibly. And uh, team tournaments seem to bring uh, that kind of uh, attitude more to me yeah, rather than because in an individual tournament, I'm generally taking oh. more risks and so forth. But uh, team tournaments, I'm playing more carefully. Well, talking about risks, here is one game where you took a lot of risks and definitely uh, would be one of your top games in your and. No, but this game, I, I did not. Uh, Feel any uh, risk at all? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It was I, all, the, the only risk I took was probably miscalculating something. But uh, I had like a good uh, time advantage. Yeah. I mean, uh, mostly like uh, I, I think this uh, this was in two thousand nine. Yeah, this is one yeah, of so. the most recent games, just a year and a half ago at Poikowski. Yeah. And you call it the nameless immortal? Like people have called it the nameless immortal. Why is that? Well. Uh, you know, you want to always have some kind of uh, classification for uh, every game, yeah. Like you know, something. Uh, for instance, uh, this Anderson Kiveriski, yeah. This is a, it's a immortal game because uh, one side is like you know uh, um, completely ignoring development. The other side is like uh, killing the this thing, yeah. So just so many pieces are developed. So one is just giving, sacrificing both the rooks and so on. But uh, for some reason, this uh, uh, people uh, they could not uh, put any uh, uh, any classification to this game. It had everything, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, a good opening preparation, a good follow up, and then a sacrifice of pieces and everything together. Yeah, so it was not easy to classify this game. Yeah, so you just give a, a name, nameless. <laughs> it's it's well played throughout. So it started off with the night orc and uh, Artemiev, as you all know, is one of the best players in the world now. I think at that point when the game was played, he was world number 10, uh, 2761 ELO. And Shashi oh, with the white pieces, this was all preparation. And I think this, as you have mentioned, this was analyzed by you in 2006. So it, it, be, yeah. it, it was 13 years ago. And this is one thing, guys, which you should learn from Shashi Kiran 100% uh, is that hard work is never wasted. If you work on something, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe after a year, in case of Shashi Kiran, even after 13 years, something can be useful. It's, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and you, you did remember most of your analysis. Yeah, uh, this one, yeah, because uh, first of all, uh, this line we prepared first in uh, 2006. And uh, this was, uh, 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 I mean, there was, uh, uh, 
uh, we had a camp like at the time yeah, 2006 before the i think uh, roughly before the um, asian games yeah could be could be a little bit uh, uh, the thing and uh, at the time like uh, night of was heavily uh, in my airport area and i was working on night of and uh, also there was a separate uh, official camp with uh, Hari, myself, uh, Humpy and uh, Lev Sakis. But this was this camp was before the official camp, yeah. This was uh, by the players, yeah. And we worked a lot of that in the night off. And uh, I also got, got to win a nice game against Almodiaki in the Asian Games, okay. yeah. From the opening preparation, yeah. Basically, a lot of it was uh, opening preparation. And uh, this idea, like uh, to go uh, to go into this line, yeah, and especially uh, this uh, uh, Bishop F two was of course a, a little bit uh, recent, but I had this idea, yeah. Not uh, at the time itself, I had this idea, like two thousand six itself, I had this idea. But Bishop F two has been played on uh, recently. Yeah, been Nakamura Grandelius actually happened in twenty eighteen. So at that point, yeah. did you feel like, oh, yeah, I had prepared this and he he used this idea or nothing? Like? No, I, it was uh, it was okay. I mean, okay, I had prepared like a uh, long time ago. Yeah, sometimes uh, I've been waiting uh, uh, quite. Uh, for instance, the the idea against Robson, I was already waiting like uh, three four years. Yeah, so no, it happens. Yeah, and uh, actually, I, I I think I considered myself lucky to you know to get this game because. Uh, you know, uh, when something like this has already happened, yeah, like Bishop D6 was already known as a mistake. So you rarely get to show, uh, uh, I mean, something is already known, then people would generally check it and you then do not get uh, this opportunity. Yeah. So, so when, uh, just uh, a question, when Nakamura's game happened, would you be like, you know, you would update your database saying, okay, this game in this line has happened and so it's more recent. Yeah, I definitely put in a note, yeah, like, okay, I mean, uh, check the game and then put in a note, like, okay, this has happened and so on, yeah, and uh, try to, you know, this line is no longer valid, yeah, like, Bishop D6 is, uh, in my opinion, okay, it's a clear mistake, yeah, I don't think uh, it is, uh, a, I don't think any more games will come in this yeah, line anymore, yeah. yeah. So, he, uh, Nakamura had gone E takes D5 here, but so she played Bishop yeah. G3, which is also quite good. Uh, and after bishop takes g3 8g i think uh, you just felt that taking this pawn would be incorrect uh, with the king in the center right i i think uh, yeah okay i also uh, probably some rook h3 and g4 perhaps yeah mm -hmm. rook h3 and yeah g4 could be coming in so he took on e4 and this is i think the point where you uh, thought for a long time right o over here no, 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 no. i i had this move in my prep yeah i barely spent like uh, seven or eight minutes i played g4 ah, quite so you yeah. remembered it and the, actually i until hg3 i had like uh, i had uh, uh, more time on the clock in fact i had 1.34 yeah we started at 130 i think so you had four minutes more no 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 not, not more, more time sorry no we started with 140 i spent like barely six minutes on the uh, uh, clock, yeah. But if you are well prepared, you you don't do like those blitzing out moves. Yeah, like uh, Setu likes to do that. He he plays his opening so quickly. He builds up like one forty. He will go to one forty eight. I I think it's it's possible. But uh, uh, when I played my move sixteen, yeah, like uh, this was like already I spent some time. My case, uh, it is more like I'm trying to remember a little bit. Uh, you know, try to understand like uh, why such things have happened. Try to remember a little bit of details, right? It takes a while. Yeah? I think it's individual preference. If you remember all the details, then you can play it quickly. Yeah. True, true. So you sort of immerse yourself into the game. Uh, knight d5, yes. bishop c4. Uh, yeah, actually, I could take the pawn already. I mean, uh, instead of uh, going on uh, bishop c4. Bishop c4 is kind of a safe move where, you know, you develop uh, pieces, you connect the roots and so on. I, I, it was already possible for me to take the pawn, yeah. Yeah, you could have taken here, and I think the move that you felt was that after knight f6, these pawns are g5. Weak. So g5, knight e4, queen e3, and uh, queen g3, knight f3, uh, queen f2, queen f4, 
yeah here after koi g3 i miss root x4 while calculating yeah i mean it was important to have the, seen this uh, root x4 detail yeah otherwise uh, it becomes a little bit uh, you have to repeat yeah so in a way uh, now if he exchanges the queen rook f4 no, this is just a uh, very difficult this knight question, is yeah. kind of trapped this knight is stuck and then there is also a possibility of attacking uh, uh, h7 because that uh, pawn is under attack now actually rook f7 is threatened so it's a lot of uh, things to you know right. defend here Here, uh, you went bishop c4, developing. He went knight e5. And knight e5 is already a big mistake. Yeah, yeah. this think, was uh, the last, was... like sort of the fatal error. Yeah, this was fatal error. Yeah, I think it was already necessary for him to go something like gf, uh, ef3, and the castles. Yeah. Sorry, bishop c4, ef, gf, and castles. But uh, when he played any five, uh, I think you kind of figured out uh, very quickly that this is bad. Bishop. Uh, I I I think I took some time, yeah, because uh, no, here I spent only four minutes, yeah. yeah. Take. Because uh, uh, I felt that uh, I cannot uh, stop the momentum, yeah, at this mm. point, yeah. I mean, I had uh, I my king is much safer because he cannot go to the king side with the sketch file open. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this king and, is the big uh, problem in center. It's not safe. Yeah. Can't go here. Can't go here because, uh, well, finally, Artemiev does decide after knight f5 to go to the short side. But uh, now we have this famous Anastasia's mate patterns coming up on the board. Beautiful. I think you you were attracted to that mate right in this position somehow. Well, it is a it's a good move. Yeah, I mean, you stop knight d three check and uh, all this uh, tricks are all uh, and uh, you have a trick yourself. Yeah, why not? True, true. So, guys, one question to all of you here: uh, What? How does White finish off the game? This is also called as Anastasia's mate, and it's very pretty because you have sort of put your queen on c three, and now. You might be expecting that you will recapture back, but Shashi has planned something else. Yes, Suryansh, you are right. Uh... By the way, Shashi, while you uh, while people saw this fantastic winner says, what was your age when you started chess? I think uh, for all the people who want to know Shashi's initial, uh, how he began chess and how he improved, we published a video today. On on chess base India, did you check it, Sashi? Uh, probably check it later. It's yeah. uh, it's right at we we published at twelve in the night, and it was about uh, that where in the um, PSPB there was this one talk where you had spoken about how you improved at chess. So we took out that part and we put it there with all the pointers, how your dad helped you, how you improved. So so please check that out if you want to know uh, Sashi's uh, path. To how he became a strong player. Yeah, very, very right, uh, guys. Check here, King H8, take on H7, and take here with a beautiful mate. This guy here checks the king, and these two squares are controlled. So of course, Artemia was not going to fall for it. He played Rook F C8, and now Knight to C5. So bringing in your final piece, sort of who, which was. Out of the game, f6, and now queen h3 again a, a very good move attacking the h7 pawn. And after h6, it seems like uh, the fireworks are coming to an end, but they've just begun. So white to move, guys. Another ha, Shashi did was a move like knight h6 coming to your mind here. How was it like? Here I was uh, calculating every possible sacrifice. Yeah. No, not just knight at six. Uh, I saw that uh, knight at six was uh, already uh, winning. I mean, uh, but uh, first, no, first. Then I thought like uh, I had much uh, easier uh, this thing. Like for instance, uh, this. Uh, of course, what I did in the game. You want to have this for the viewers to check. Yes, they have already found it. Bondita, Bhagwati, Tota, Srinivas. 
you are absolutely right this was the move uh, although suryan sharma is asking if rook d7 is also possible here uh, just to block the queen's path to g yeah i mean i i did see that knight at 6 g6 you know that uh, queen at 6 uh, queen uh, g7 and then finally i could take on b7 which is just winning just take on g7 but uh, it's a kind of uh, a little bit less yeah for what the portion offers mm -hmm. yeah i mean you're still winning the same game and so on but uh, this is uh, really really less for what uh, it offers yeah true so, so just uh, right move here was g5 and this was such a cool move because now you really can't be taking here with the h pawn as the queen jumps in and then g7 hangs so he had to take with the f pawn and now whew, <laughs> what a game what a game first you go queen c3 then queen h3 then g5 then rook d7 because now when he took here the queen block but uh was it very important to play uh, g5 and do this? Like, could you? Yeah, because other, otherwise, queen is not coming to e6. Yeah. Like, here, take. It was actually. Yeah, here, queen is ah, not coming to You want to come in so. with the check. So that's why the right move order is g5, fg, rook d7, take. Now, take on h6 and queen e6. And, and I think you saw it all the way until the end from here. I mean. Uh, not really, but uh, I understand that uh, this position, you know, like I, I had this idea that queen e6, queen at 6 check, and then once I reached this position on e7, I started to calculate again. Ah, here. But uh, it's, it was pretty clear, and then... No, but uh, the, the last, there was still one last uh, point, yeah, queen g6 check I had to see, yeah, that was the only last uh, idea, yeah, for instance, uh, this... Uh, like if you uh, went here, then this might not work. Huh? Yeah, perhaps. Uh, no, 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 not. I think uh, yeah, it's supposed to go away. Yeah, maybe it is not uh, so easy. Maybe it's still some ideas, but at least it was not easy. I think d4. Yeah. Yeah, it's more complex. I think queen g6 just because now the rook is ready to come swing over from this side. Because if he takes. No, it is probably winning, but I, I, I think uh, this was uh, queen g6 was more, uh, you know, easier there. Just uh, it's a maiden three. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And I think also kudos to Artemia for allowing. Yeah, he, he allowed to be the man to be executed on. But I think that not many people uh, nowadays are doing it. Yeah, it's a great case of uh, sportsmanship. Yeah. Amazing, and also one of your uh, tremendously memorable games. Uh, one thing which we wanted to say is that all your trainers, this was what you had mentioned on the Teacher's Day uh, post of Chessbase. No, I, yeah, this is only uh, trainers from outside. Yeah. Also, I uh, like, uh, worked a lot of people with, uh, from India as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, the trainers that, uh, uh, of course, uh, with the exception of uh, Chichalo, Everybody, uh, Chuchala and Yusuf, uh, everybody else, uh, they were uh, helping us in the team tournaments, mm. yeah. I mean, with Yusuf and Chuchala, I did uh, one to one training for myself. But all the others, like, I, I also worked uh, separately as well and uh, uh, also part of the team to, uh, tournaments. So yeah. I can just name them from top left. If we go like clockwise, then it is Sakis, Yusupov, Salov. Vladimirov, Chuchelo, and Ubilava. And these are some of the yeah. very well known trainers. And each, each of them is special in their own way. Yeah. It's very, uh, you know, and I'm quite happy that I've uh, learned uh, from them. You yeah. have actually been very clear about this. Yeah, that uh, you want to, if you want to improve, you need to upgrade yourself. And for that, you have to work with different people. Yes, I, I think uh, it uh, allows uh, you to put uh, uh, things in perspective, yeah. Because uh, in most of the cases, uh, simply you have to understand what type of person you are and then go about eliminating your weaknesses, yeah, and then improving on your strengths, yeah. So I think each one of them, they gave uh, uh, a different idea like how to go about chess and uh, how to, you know, improve uh, improve the areas where I was like uh, having problems yeah 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 and of course a lot of people uh, are there with whom you work in India but uh, one one person 
uh, it's very difficult to it's a very big it's list it's a yeah. huge list but number, yeah. i mean it's very difficult to uh, name name them all yeah but uh, everyone has yeah, influence yeah. in one i think i think that will happen when sashi kiran writes his book at some point uh, and that's where everyone would get their due uh, before like last game sashi that i want to look at and one which is a beautiful one uh-huh. is your your game with shankland i think again one of those classic classic sashi uh, exchange sacrifices because uh, it was it was i think this was the event where you won it beauti- quite easily uh, this capablanca memorial you this was never easy yeah i mean uh, i was uh... uh this was okay i mean in the event the result only uh, comes to you but the the, the event no, the it was very, very tough, tough. Yeah. games were very tough and uh, uh, one of the games i think uh, it was the sixth round i believe yeah this was uh, against um, uh casper peron yeah who casper peron this guy from ah, yeah, poland yeah, yeah. yeah true this was uh, the, the four four time uh, was, uh, world it, champion of solving yeah yeah he is yeah, uh, uh, this uh, solve solve a, a fantastic at solving yeah and uh, this was uh, i think the sixth round yeah against uh, casper p uh, fifth sixth round yeah i was completely lost in the rook and game yeah i managed to save this game and uh, eventually i think this played a big role yeah yes that is true i, I remember we did a very nice uh, interview after this victory and it was one of my memorable interviews talking to you uh, after this win uh, also you see this is very similar to your game with um, our team f where you played bishop takes d5 so uh, it's like these dynamics where when you see your opponent's king in the center or he's not well coordinated uh, you just uh, here give like sacrifice not sacrifice but give up your bishop and then kind of well uh, it's it's a question of uh, uh, momentum yeah. yeah if you have the momentum with you it's uh, important to keep uh, keep it going yeah not to let it go yeah so he, here at this point if i move the bishop back uh, probably you take the pawn on e4 yeah so not uh, entirely clear i do i had any choice in this position yeah bishop e7 knight e4 maybe knight a5 with the idea of knight b3 and you had sir, some compensation perhaps here but yeah but there is some some competition but i am not sure why black is actually fighting for more yeah so maybe it's equal yeah perhaps so after take take and i bishop f5 bishop f1 what what you guys should really see uh, is this moment where he played bishop g2 bishop f5 rook a2 now uh, i think sashi already had seen that he can do something very special and this i'm not going to reveal because this is rook c8 no i i think the, you missed the the thing yeah you missed the moment yeah this was the moment you had to ask for really moment, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> please 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 tell your your thought like wh- why rook c no uh, see the thing is like uh, already my pieces are doing quite uh, well yeah, at this point uh, all my pieces are working and uh, he has his bishop on c1 and rook and rook on h1 is uh, not uh, working at all yeah and now uh, the only last piece that is uh, kind of not uh, finding itself any use is the rook on a yeah so at this point you have a like to, to make uh, some kind of uh, progress i need to but there i am not really doing anything yeah? like on the on the on the d file uh, d1 is controlled d2 is controlled and then uh, he is going to you know come with bishop f1 hitting my rook yeah so this was one of the key moments yeah like i had to uh, see what is going to happen next yeah mm. and this was uh, quite the difficult move in the game yeah you played rook c8 bishop f1 yeah, i'm i'm trying to open the file with uh, c6 yeah i think that this was uh, very tough yeah when you put the rook behind the pawn yeah and then the the plan is going to come next this is uh, where you know normal players would move their rook because bishop is worth 3 and rook is worth 5 but but sashi for sashi uh, exchange sacrifices come naturally and for, uh, secondly i think it was one of those moments where the light square weaknesses really start to speak 
it's amazing. Uh, C6, E takes D3, Rook B2. Now look at this. Yeah, come on, no. you spoil it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I should have. <laughs> it was not obvious. Yeah, for sure. Are there any more moments in this game? Or this was the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was, I think this was the last oh. moment. Yeah, I think I think this was the last moment. Yeah, because uh, 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 Sanjay mentioned in this book. Yeah, the, this uh, small uh, improvement. I think uh, road to improvement. Uh, what, what is the name of the book? Uh, small Ashan. steps to giant improvement. Small steps to giant. Yeah, the, yeah. He wrote that uh, he missed this move. Yeah, I think uh, the next one. Yeah, so. This was uh, probably the, the uh, key moment. Yeah, I it, okay. I mean, I, it's uh, now I see that uh, yeah, it was uh, quite possible to miss this move. Yeah, because uh, normally you are expecting black that uh, he takes on uh, b five because this uh, rook is attacking c three and so on. But uh, it's quite easy to miss uh, this move. Yeah, knight e d five and the point being after takes you take with the pawn. Uh, yeah. and then the rook opens up. There's this very strong pawn. Bishop is doing well. Knight is jumping in. So, yeah, here, uh, knight came in. Rook g1. <clears throat> I'm I'm slightly afraid to make the moves in case there is <laughs> <laughs> in case there's some moment. Yeah, okay. Now now, now it's okay. I mean, now it's kind of uh, more like a white piece symphony. Yeah. Just uh, I mean, uh, of course, I'm referring to this game. Uh, uh, Karpo won against Kasparov in the World Championship, but uh, that was like opposite color bishops. But here also it's opposite color bishop. But here I see uh, that. Uh, the the black piece Wh which game of Karpo game. versus Kasparo was that one? Uh. I think uh, it was probably a final match. Maybe the, the game was uh, referred to as white key symphony. Yeah. Ah, ah, you mean that knight takes e six, f e six, and then bishop? Yeah, yeah, ah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, so here. So it's basically, this portion is basically similar like uh, domination on the light squares. You G4. And uh, all his pieces are on uh, the dark squares. Yeah. And, uh, basically, uh, no moves, uh, not much for white to do. And then just waiting for the, you know, my, I mean, the king to come and so on. I like how uh, <laughs> you put all your pieces on light squares, all of them. It's not a coincidence in a way because. He is playing completely on light square and here even ready to exchange pieces uh, g6, rook g2, king e6. King is tweeted a bit. That, that, that is, uh, I mean, I think the, it was more like triangulation uh, also. Yeah, no, not that. It was just more like trying to blind. Uh, really didn't want to, you know, repeat the same moves in time to me. Yeah? Just a little bit of. Uh, and once the time trouble ended, then uh, it was necessary to already to convert. Yeah. Maybe there is a small moment here yeah, at some point. Yeah. You can just, uh, okay. I'll tell you the moment. Let's say you can move to uh, move number 38. Yeah. And you, uh, now, finally, after a long time. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. This is, actually, this is a moment which is not easy because it once again shows your flexible uh, thinking. Because for so many moves you did not take the rook, and now you. Uh... No, here I here I had like uh, four minutes, and uh, I felt uh, with the king entering the position, it should be winning clearly. Yeah. So take take king here, and after going into this uh, end game, b six. Took the pawn, but this requires. Uh, there's one last trick. Yeah, I can just show it for sure. the viewers. Sure, I will. Now. I will. This time, I will stop here. You yeah, see yeah. that uh, in a way, yeah, yeah. No, no, white yeah. has kind of stopped all of black's play because this pawn is protected. You have no real break that is coming in anywhere. So, what exactly should black do here? That is the question. Black to move. The final uh, question to you guys. There was 
Okay, maybe there is one. Maybe there is one more. Really? Yeah, so it's not final question. Yeah, so just. Ah, uh, okay, okay. There is one more. There is one more. I'll. Aha. F M F one says D four is what you want to play. Okay, interesting. Uh, Sahil, you cannot take on F four because that pawn is protected. Blindfold chess says D four. A lot of people want to play D four. Saket says B four. Tarang Raj Gupta says bring the king back to B two. I think it's not not easy to get it to B two. Because the king will sit on c1 and then you can't reach b2. Mohit Gupta says b4. Toro de Boro says b4. Fantastic. Is is this the only move? Uh, b4 or you think d4 also works? B4 is probably the best one. Uh, d4, I don't think it's winning probably. Ah, so b4. And now you see if you take with the bishop, then h4 pawn is hanging. So had to take with the pawn. Push. Push. Have to stop it. And now, yeah, and now it's the final, uh, yeah, final idea. move, guys. Try to think. This is a really beautiful, beautiful symphony. Uh, I would, uh, isn't this called some kind of uh, Novotny theme? You know, like you are, you put something in between, and you kind of jam up the diagonals. Ooh, this this game would also come in one of your best games, right, Shashi? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This is beautiful. Uh, Govind Arora, well done. Mohit Sharma, you are also right uh, here. And Sahil Patkar, Bhaskar Singh, Sohel Sheikh, Sarth Bhosle, all very alert and have found the move here. D4. Very cool. Very cool. So many sacrifices in this game. And the final one, because if pawn takes, then you make a queen. And he had to take with the bishop, king h4, b6, bishop now protects this and the king is all ready to move and the h pawn queens. Beautiful, beautiful. And with this win, you managed to win the Capablanca Memorial by one point. That's why I said it was easy because, <laughs> but but uh, of course the... No, but uh, it is not, not, uh, not uh, easy uh, at all. Yeah, like uh, the thing was... Uh, you have to have some luck, you know, just, uh, and I think uh, the sixth round game against uh, Casper, I was uh, lucky to say the Suruk and Bonnet game. And uh, that was one thing. And I think that the last round also, uh, Ivan took the overpressed against one of the opponents and then uh, uh, he lost the game. Yeah. So, I mean, so many results have to come in my favor to, for me to win the tournament. Yeah. Right. Right. Sashi, so and uh, just this final note here, you see, this is one picture where you are talking with all these youngsters who later on went on to become your teammates, Setu here, Adiban here, uh, also Prasanna Rao, who, who was a strong player, Priya Darshan, who is now a GM, Shyam Sundar. So what do you see as the future of Indian chess? And, uh, you know, do would you think about, uh, yeah. I think this was uh, before uh, one of the under sixteen Olympiads. Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, I mean, with with your uh, uh, wealth of experience, do you see you also guiding the youngsters now? Do you see that you still have a lot of play within you? How how do you uh, see yourself? I generally, uh, I think it's there's a lot of uh, energy in me. Yeah, just to keep going. Yeah. So uh, so. Okay, this uh, I think this was uh, the photograph depicts uh, a moment because uh, the I by the time I had already played a lot of uh, team championships, yeah, and uh, I guess uh, Ramesh probably put put me to it, like you know to uh, to see how to you know approach a team championship, you know, put put in a word uh, to the youngsters and so on, yeah. But uh, this, uh, as far as the chess is concerned, I would generally li like to play as long as possible. Yeah, I mean, I've, the main thing for me is to um, is to you know work towards improvement. Yeah, so as long as I'm feeling that you know I have a lot of uh, scope for uh, improvement and uh, I'm working, there's a motivation for me to work towards it. I'll still keep playing a lot. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, and we couldn't be more excited. 
you know from being this youngster uh, who, whom you have inspired so many so many players to now becoming a world class player i think uh, shashi you have you have achieved so much so much in the world of chess and thank you for for all that you have done so it's amazing uh, there there's I... one thing one uh, fact which i wanted to clarify from you uh, when you were young you were uh, quite quite uh, fat you know you you uh, and amruta keeps telling me always that shashi was very uh, focused about imp- as you say improvement and he played badminton a lot to lose his weight is this story true um i did a lot of uh, physical exercise uh, it was not not only uh, badminton uh, there was uh, the spirit where i uh, uh, i learned uh, swimming and uh, almost used to swim 2 uh, to 3 kilometers every day wow. yeah and uh, finally i think i, I uh, but somehow uh, swimming was okay i i i felt uh, quite all right like in the sense that it was good for my uh, health and so on but uh, i lost weight only by going to the gym afterwards yeah somehow uh, swimming was very good like okay i mean uh, i learned uh, Uh, near my place and it was quite uh, helpful but uh, to actually lose weight i think uh, you need to put in something extra yeah and uh, this i could uh, get it done only in the gym yeah like a lot of aerobics like cycling running and so on you really have to sweat it out yeah and uh, uh, i think i probably lost somewhere uh, close to uh, 25 kilos or something 25 that is a lot yeah i mean i came down from 90 kg to somewhere close to 65 67 wow. something like wow. this yeah. and that was only because you know you you said that it helps me in chess i need to do it and it gave you motivation and as always you know um uh, okay it is also it's a, good, uh, good a combination of, uh, con- 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 of many things yeah uh, when i was young i used to you know uh, eat uh, quite a lot and uh, put on a lot of weight and uh, during tournaments also i used to have i uh, eat a lot of creptin and so on yeah. and uh, this was a lot of calories and especially when you're playing you're not really aware of what you're eating yeah. like uh, you just uh, if you feel that sometimes you know you have a bad portion okay you eat something yeah just uh, out of a uh, little bit of uh, you're not really conscious about what you are eating so i put on a lot of weight uh, and uh, practically uh, at some point uh, it became a little bit too much yeah and my dad took me to the gym and then uh, uh, and uh, he said to the gym coach this boy needs to you know get uh, reduce weight and so on and then the gym instructor told me no problem i manage yeah it's just uh, i mean the guy was so confident yeah like okay i mean how can this be like 90 kilos person and then uh, it's just saying okay i'll do it yeah it's cool yeah and after like uh, one and a half two years uh, i had lost completely lost the weight i mean like uh, totally i lost weight and then now uh, also doing this uh, weight training yeah and uh, you know trying to build uh, this uh, lean muscle and uh, so on yeah so uh, it was uh, i mean that i mean i, I, really, I really don't know like uh, i mean that kind of uh, confidence yeah like uh, in uh, either in himself yeah like okay i, mean, I can just uh, have make this happen yeah uh, not uh, not not many people have that kind of uh, confidence yeah this trainer was so confident yeah this will happen good one yeah just uh, and um, Uh, so that was uh, the thing and what 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 is actually the original question no, no, was I mean like, that uh, you you managed to lose a lot of weight yeah by playing uh, weight, yeah, yeah yeah so once uh, once i managed to lose this weight um uh, then afterwards i had this feeling that you know i have to keep uh, doing physical exercise to keep this weight off yeah because once you stop yeah again yeah i mean even if you lose a lot of weight once you stop doing physical exercise it uh, comes back again yeah, yeah. so from that point onwards like once i lost the weight i try to make uh, physical exercise uh, as part of my daily routine yeah, every day almost at least something you know like uh, some kind of aerobics or uh, uh, this thing yeah or yoga or whatever like whatever is uh, possible whatever time permits and uh, badminton came uh, actually a little bit later yeah badminton was like uh, although i was playing badminton uh, 
I think one of those uh, camps in uh, uh, Calicut, yeah, it was uh, ASAF organized mm. camp. So at the time, uh, and uh, I was there, and uh, we were basically working from uh, morning ten to five or something like that. And uh, one of uh, these camps, I I, I went to uh, uh, went to this uh, indoor stadium, yeah, nearby. So they were conducting uh, coaching for all the badminton kids and so on, yeah. So I enrolled in that. Uh, uh this thing and then uh, spent like i took a badminton coaching for almost uh, i think let's say around one hour every day coaching i took i mean you know to properly hold the racket you know to serve and so on you make all this uh, uh, hundred uh, repetitions of the serves and uh, every shot is, uh, this thing and uh, you know properly learning uh, this stuff yeah so that's uh, after after you know like you learn something yeah you know then you okay kind of uh, pick it up and, and it, then it became like that would make it part of my routine and as as sashi has already said he doesn't do anything lightly if he does something he wants to improve at it and the same with badminton he kept getting better at it and he's he's a very good player by the way abhijit gupta in the chat says i still remember my team event with sashi in asian teams he helped me so much throughout the event with openings and chess in general looking forward to having those long chats with him Yes. of course uh, uh, team tournaments have been uh, very uh, have very much been part of my uh, this thing and i think still it will be and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, this thing because uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, these team championships allows you to uh, interact with uh, of course when you interact with the teammates it's still like uh, there are different personalities yeah and uh, when you are discussing uh, uh, different kinds of positions you get to see like you know uh, one guy is better in some area one guy another guy is better in another area it's a, it's a lot of interaction and everybody is improving in the process yeah, yeah true so uh, i am really also looking forward to a uh, uh, lot of uh, team tournaments in the future yeah wonderful by the way just a couple of super chats abhinav raina thank you for becoming backer of indian chess rohit athalya says good afternoon sagar good to watch you after a long time great stand up shashi kiran op thank you rohit basu vrit mitra uh, i i want to ask you what exactly is this op stuff <laughs> op is overpowered and it means like if uh, in gaming terms whenever someone does plays a good game like all these online games are there uh, pubg and all of that in that whenever someone plays very well they say op which means overpowered this guy overpowered in the game so it's like that gaming term came into chess and now whenever someone makes a good move or if someone is like doing great work they say op so like sashi kiran op is like a great great job thank you yeah. and uh, basuvrit mitra thank you so much anil anuradha ravi has a point which says a uh, question which says what is more important in chess new tactics and improvisation or memorizing the games doesn't memorization dissolve the purpose of chess uh not really uh, but uh, in chess it's uh, more uh, relevant to stay alert than uh, everything else yeah it, uh, you have to uh, understand that every move changes a little bit of uh, something in the position and then something that was not existing previously will uh, probably uh, i mean it, cha- it changes in the next uh, position yeah for instance when i see, see when i see this uh, games yeah like uh, uh uh may i am naming when when we were seeing this games yeah for instance this game against shankland yeah uh you really probably would not have uh, thought about this move c6 uh before you put the rook on c8 yeah i mean it you can actually start start let's say it's c6 then probably if you start with c6 then white simply takes b c yeah i mean let's just go back a little bit yeah so uh, here for instance if you now go see it's probably why just uh, simply takes on c6 and the rook is not uh, making it useful there yeah. so for, so first it's, it's a small uh, change yeah it is uh, it is necessary for uh, 
you know people to understand what changes in the position yeah i mean apart from the memory memorization part of openings apart from being uh, alert to tactics and uh, new uh, whatever new is coming in and so on it is necessary to understand why one move is being played in such a position and why it is not uh, possible in another position yeah if that is actually uh, mostly it is uh, how to understand this uh, small small nuances yeah that makes a big difference so for this understanding this nuance it is necessary for a, a chess player to be more alert all the time yeah what is changing in the position and what is what has not changed and then you know to keep uh, looking for the these things yeah so it can be a, everything together put together it cannot be like one thing you can ignore and another thing you can you can, you can uh, take it like it has to be all together it is uh, some kind of uh, coordination between everything yeah so it's not only tactics it's not only calculation it's all everything put together yeah true true brilliant and uh, i i would say that today it was a very very enjoyable chat with you shashi and it wouldn't have been possible without the help of two individuals one of them was uh, sarvanan who helped me with some of the games and the other one was uh, surya ganguli uh, both of them helped me a lot in in picking up some of the and i have to thank them too yeah uh, and and i mean they both know you very well uh, one of them has played so many tournaments with you the other has been your friend since many years so it's been it's been a great pleasure shashi i hope you had a good time you gave 2 hours of your time on your 40th birthday uh, to us i hope you you enjoyed it but it's all it's also a, a very pleasant experience for me you know you are always in my best games yeah it's a big uh, pleasant memory for me to you know to go back to all those games all those pleasant memories mainly because you know this uh, games yeah it's always uh, as a whole, tournament as a whole yeah when you see the tournament be it asian game be it olympiad or be the cup of lanka memorial or uh, world team championship 2017 or the world uh, team championship 2010 all the games we saw yeah i played all these tournaments very well yeah i mean it is a you know when you when you look at these games and uh, and then uh, i have uh, uh, a lot of uh, pleasant memories associated with these games yeah so it has been a very pleasant experience mm-hmm. for me yeah. again thank, thank you, you so much and shashi this 70 games which you have are you planning to write a book or something i would probably write uh, sometime i have i mean probably write a book but uh, it's for the moment it has to be uh, i mean put on hold yeah because uh, i have a lot of uh, personal game going on at the moment yeah you have to become a gm yeah <laughs> uh, 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 yeah well uh, okay uh, it is uh, no for me uh, i mean uh, to, answer, to answer your uh, the thing uh, the correspondence is also a uh, big area of theoretical research yeah so that is uh, quite fascinating and uh, uh, to speak about it uh, the time will not be enough yeah there is a lot of uh, things uh, to be uh, i mean it's a, it's a, it's also a personal thing yeah because uh, some players feel that uh, correspondence may not uh, to be their uh, this thing but i feel correspondence chess has helped me a lot and they will continue to help us well yeah uh, especially for uh, theoretical research of opening yeah Brilliant. so yeah we wish you good luck and w- thank you once again shashi for the for your time today see you bye guys that was shashi kiran one of the legends of indian chess uh, second indian after Vishy Anand to cross twenty seven hundred. Many of you are confused as to uh, did he become India number two and all of that. No, it was like Anand was number one player who reached twenty seven hundred. Then Shashi Kiran made it. Right now his rating has dropped a bit, but he was second and it reached all the way to twenty seven twenty on the FIDE rating list. He was in the top twenty in the world. so a great great player and at the start of the stream i did read out his list of achievements four time national champion asian junior champion winner of hastings politican cup sigaman aeroflot asian champion 
एशियन गेम्स 2006 अर्जुना अवार्ड विनर पैम्पलोना टूर्नामेंट विनर कॉर्सिकन सर्किट विनर एशियन ब्लिट्स चैंपियन कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंस आई एम सेकेंड टू विशी आनंद इन 2013 वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप एंड ओलंपियाड 2014 ब्रॉन्ज मेडल विनर एज वेल एज अ सिल्वर मेडल इन इंडिविजुअल चेस वेल यू कांट गेट सम वन हु हैज अचीव्ड मोर देन दिस इज वन पिक्चर ऑफ शशि विच शोज यू नो द एंटायर एटमोस्फियर इज डार्क देर इज लाइक द सन सिटिंग इन द सन सेटिंग इन द बैकग्राउंड इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस uh in sidges but look what he is doing yeah he is playing chess with complete focus against ernesto inarkiev and uh yeah just about sums up chashi kiran's life dedicated for chess as he said everything he does is finally in some way or the other you know leads to chess that chess is his life and we are so lucky to have a player like him in um <clears throat> in india a big big uh, asset for indian chess and thank you all for being here i think this this stream will remain one of my favorites because it has the best games of shashi here and i hope that you guys will also uh, watch it again at some point learn from it until then take care tonight at Nine. I will be there on Suhani Shah's stream. So see you there and take care. Bye bye.